Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And it's our unit on history today.、Mm -hmm. Lots of things happened in the past, so of course there are lots of things to talk about. Today we're going to talk about some history of Europe. We're going to medieval Europe, and it's more than just kings and castles. If you think about medieval Europe, what exactly do you think of? Oh, I think of knights. You know, knights who would who would fight battles from a horse. They'd have that long sword,、right. and they try to knock each other off. I think of that. I think of King Arthur. I think of times before they had good medicine and good bathrooms and bathtubs because back then those people didn't bathe as much as we do,、mm. and it it、uh, probably didn't smell very good either. I think of the Middle Ages actually, which is a period in European history, and it depends on the the definition in the dictionary or encyclopedia you're looking at. I've seen anything from 500 A.D. to 14, or maybe 1100 to 14. I see different、uh, time periods used sometimes, but.、Uh, I'm really glad I live in the modern world and not back, and didn't have to grow up back then because things were tough. Does sound like it was a rather savage way to exist、yes. back then, unless you were kings and queens. But then people wanted to kill you if you were a king or queen, you know. True, true, but、uh, <laughs> still, you enjoyed lots of luxury and stuff like that, and you had lots of knights protecting you, and of course, you lived in big castles, and、yes. that's the kind of image that a lot of people have of medieval Europe. But we're going to talk about the fact that there's more to medieval Europe than just those kings and just those castles. So let's find out what some of those things are. Let's read through the entire contents of our lesson right now. A great stone castle sits atop a hill. On a wide plain in front of it, a crowd of humbly dressed peasants cheer as two knights, armored in steel and riding huge horses, joust for a prize. To one side, the nobles in their finery watch from a wooden gallery. This is a typical image of Europe in the Middle Ages, also known as the medieval era. The people in the scene fall into three classes: nobles, knights, and peasants. If you put a king in the picture, sitting on a throne higher than the nobles, you would have a feudal system. Many societies were organized this way: the king owned the land and gave some to nobles, who gave some of their land to knights, who let the peasants work on it. Through land came food, wealth, and a place to live. In return for land, each group paid the group above it either in taxes or by fighting for them in wars. Another powerful institution at the time, the Christian Church, could be compared to royalty. The church owned land and could influence kings and nobles to act in its interests. It also played an important role in education. In medieval times, priests were some of the only people who learned to read and write. They used this privilege to teach others about history, foreign languages, and more. The church was also the guardian and judge of morals in this era. It was these morals that made knights more than just warriors. The code of chivalry set out how knights should behave, and included such rules as never retreating in battle, protecting the weak, and championing good over evil. Okay, guys, let's get started. We talked about how medieval Europe、uh, could also be referred to as the Middle Ages,、um, and things were kind of primitive back then. Wow,、uh, there weren't a lot of.、Uh, Oh, there were, of course, there was no technology. No people, cars. No, no cars. No smartphones. People had a tough time, especially if they were in that peasant class. We're going to talk about how there were different social classes back then. They were even、uh, more restrictive than they are currently today in some countries. We're going to talk about that. But first, our title tells us that when people think about medieval Europe, they think about Kings and castles, but it was more than just that. And so, in the next two units, we're going to be talking about what else besides kings and castles existed in this time of history. Indeed. So let's take a look at our article for today: Medieval Europe, more than just kings and castles. 
And we begin with the first paragraph here. It says a stone castle. In fact, it's a great stone castle.、Uh-huh. It sits atop a hill. Atop just means on top of a hill. At the top of a hill. Atop is、uh, more used in writing, I think, and、yeah. it's less used. But that's what it means. There's a castle on top of a hill. A hill is kind of like a small mountain, and on a wide plain in front of it, a crowd of humbly dressed peasants cheer. As two knights, armored in steel and riding huge horses, joust for a prize,、uh, there is a wide plain. A plain, of course, is a piece of land that is flat.、Uh, there are plains in, say, Yunlin here in Taiwan, or in Kansas in the United States. There are a lot of plains there. Not a lot of trees, right? Just grass. Right, and it's very flat. Very flat. And of course, we've got some、uh, peasants there. Peasants. That's kind of the old word for farmers. Simple farmers.、Uh, you wouldn't. Call farmers down south in Taiwan peasants here. No, that would be kind of insulting. <laughs> you just call them farmers. But back then, the farmers were also very poor and uneducated, and dirty, and smelly, and disgusting, and、uh, untrustworthy, and stuff like that. So you called them peasants. And well, they're there to see this big contest. It's a big、uh, contest between two knights. These fellows who are wearing all the armor、uh, on top of their horses. Armor, of course, is the protective covering、uh, that knights wore. It's usually made out of metal.、Uh, a tank will have a lot of armor on it, for example,、mm-hmm. protective metal surface. But here, the word armor is being used as a verb, which means they are dressed in armor. They are wearing this steel. Protective covering because they're having this fight with each other. They're riding huge horses and they are jousting for a prize. So here we've got the word joust.、Uh, that means of、uh, knights fighting each other. We kind of only use it in this particular context when knights fight each other. It's called a joust, or they're having a joust, or they are jousting. Yeah, we don't do that much anymore, do we? No, no. but it's、uh, interesting to watch. You're probably only going to see it in the movies, or maybe if you go to、um, kind of an entertainment park where they go back in time. There are some uh, medieval uh, parks that you can go to, and it's like you step back in history, and you might see two guys jousting there. Uh, where they're sitting on top of those horses with those long swords, they're actually called lances, L A N C E,、mm-hmm. which is、uh, a name for a guy these days.、Right. I know some lance, yeah, lance.、Um, now I wanted to also mention that、uh, they've got to one side of this crowd, we've got the poor peasants. Who don't have any money or education, and on the other side, you've got the nobles watching this. It's entertainment for all classes, not just the rich, but it's、uh, rich and poor. And the knights, of course, are the ones providing the entertainment. The nobles、um, are the ones that have the money, and they're in their finery. Finery here just means very expensive clothing.、Um, they probably have a lot of jewelry on as well. Uh, people back then liked to show how wealthy they were.、Uh, they would have very fine clothing, their finery. They were in their finery, and they would watch from the wooden gallery. A gallery is just a place for people to sit and watch some sort of entertainment.、Uh, nowadays, we use that word for something else. It could be a big, spacious room where you go and you look at paintings, like an art gallery. But here it's a wooden gallery.、Uh, the seats, of course, were made out of wood, and they would sit to the sides watching these guys jousting or the knights jousting. So there you have it, and this is a typical image of Europe in the Middle Ages, also known as the medieval era、mm-hmm. uh, or medieval Europe in this case. So that's what it looks like. It's a typical, common image that we have of Europe at this time. We get it. To, we get to see this in movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Now the people in the scene fall into three classes.、Mm-hmm. We've got three categories or classes of people here: nobles, knights. And peasants. Okay, the nobles, of course, are the rich people, usually royalty, the royal family, etc. We've got the knights, of course, who are the guys wearing those、uh, suits of armor on top of those horses, and then you've got the peasants, who are the poor farmers. Now, if you put a king in the picture, sitting on a throne higher than the nobles. 
you would have a feudal system. Okay, so here we've got a throne. That's what a king sits on. The king ascended to the throne in the 14th century. We could say, as an example here, throne of course is the royal chair, and of course that person would be higher than the nobles. We've got the nobles there, but the king is the highest of all. Oh yeah, he's got all the power.、Um, back then, if you talk about a feudal system, a lot of the societies in history were organized this way. The king, of course, owned everything. He owned all the land, and he would give out some of the land to nobles,、uh, people who are royalty or aristocracy is another word we would use for that. And、uh, they would let the peasants work the land, or use parts of that land to become farmers. Maybe they were、uh, planting crops, and then what would happen is through land came the food and the wealth and a place to live. And in return for the land which the peasants had, and the nobles were given by the king, they then would take. Whatever they raised, either maybe some of their crops, and they would give it back to the nobles, who would then pay a tax on that to the king. So eventually, the king was paid for that land that he gave out. So everyone kind of worked for the king's good. You could say that's how the feudal system worked.、Um, it was kind of an old-fashioned system. Sometimes the king would need soldiers to help him fight off enemies, and that's when the nobles and the peasants. Would、uh, come together and fight for the king, but let's go back and see this word feudal. It's a type of system. Usually, it's used for a political system, like we have socialism, communism, feudalism. Feudalism is very ancient; it's no longer used today. But、uh, that's a system that they lived under. Now, many societies were organized this way back in time.、And、like I said, the king he would own all the land, and then he'd give some of it out to nobles. People had titles like duke. Earl,、um, things like that. They were nobility. They did no work either.、Uh, the only people who were really working back then were the peasants and the people who、um, were, you know, taking care of the shops and selling things, and、uh, some of the blacksmiths who made、uh, iron shoes, those little things we make for horses, the hoofs, and they put that on. Those are blacksmiths. They were the only people who really worked back then. The nobles and the king, no,、mm. they just kind of waited around for other people to serve them. Right, and the nobles, of course, gave some of their land to the knights, and then the knights would let the peasants work on it. So the peasants could not own their own land.、No. Uh, they were employed by the knights, and the knights, in turn, were employed, I guess, by the nobles. And then the nobles worked under the king. So that's the system of feudalism, or、uh, feng jian zhidu, as you say in Chinese. And I think、uh, ancient China had a similar system, but again, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the system, and that was. The system that was common in the Middle Ages, and that brings us about to the midway point for today's lesson. So, right now, we're going to take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest， 我是 Jesse。今天我们要阅读的文章是 Unit Six 的第一天课程。首先，我们看到第一段的第二句 ：On a white plain in front of it, a crowd of humbly dressed peasants cheer as two knights. Armored in steel and riding huge horses, joust for a prize. 在城堡前面的广阔平原上，当两名以钢制盔甲武装的骑士骑着巨大的马匹进行马上长枪比赛，来争夺奖赏时，一群穿着朴素的农民高声欢呼。副词 humbly 是卑微地、谦逊地，形容词为 humble, h u m b l e. Humbly dressed 是指穿着朴素的。如果我们说 somebody comes from a humble background， 就是指某人出身卑微。另外，我们看到 knights 后面有一个过去分词 armored。armored 在此做动词用，意思是替穿上盔甲。armored 前面省略了关系代名词 who， 原句为 two knights 后面加逗点 ，who are armored in steel。关系代名词在所接的子句中当主词时，可以省略，其后的动词要做变化。如果动词是被动的话，省略 be 动词，留下过去分词 V P P； 
。如果动词是主动的话，则是变成现在分词 v i n g。我们举一个例子来说明 ：The man who stood at the door looked familiar. 站在门口的那名男子看起来眼熟。Who 后面的 stood 为主动语态，所以 who 省略后 stood 变成 standing， 所以此句可改为 The man standing at the door looked familiar. 我们接着看到第二段的第二句 If you put a king in the picture sitting on a throne higher than the nobles, you would have a feudal system. 如果将国王放在画面中，坐在比贵族更高的王座上。就形成封建制度。名词 throne 是王座、王权的意思。ascend the throne 是登上王位的意思。ascend a s c e n d 有登上、攀登的意思。After the king passed away, his only son ascended the throne. 这位国王过世后，他唯一的儿子登上王位。On the throne 就是指在位中。In 1900. Queen Victoria was still on the throne, 63 years after taking the throne. 在西元一九零零年，维多利亚女王在登基六十三年后仍然在位。另外，这一句有一个形容词 feudal， 意思是封建制度的。Feudal society 就是指封建社会。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We shall now continue with our lesson. Of course, we're talking about a typical scene in medieval Europe or in the Middle Ages. We've got a king, and under the king, we've got nobles, and under the nobles, we've got the knights, and under the knights, we've got the peasants. And of course, the peasants don't own the land; they're allowed to use it. But if you had land, well, you had some things here. Through land came food, wealth. And a place to live in. So yes, indeed, the king is all okay. He and the queen live in the castle with the princes and the princesses and stuff like that. I suppose the nobles had land too and a house they could stay in. The knights as well. The peasants they probably had a hut or something they could live in or a tent or who knows. Maybe they slept under the stars. But hey, if you had access to land, you could have some food. You could have some money. Again, if you were knights and above. And also, you would have a place to live, a place to, you know, take a bath, take a nap, you know, sleep at night, watch TV, sit back and relax, stuff like that. Yeah, in return for is this phrase we're looking at here. In return for the work that I do for one of my friends, she makes cookies for me every month. So it's kind of an agreement you have with someone. Someone does something, and in return for that, or as an exchange, you could also say somebody does something for the person doing the work, or maybe you're both doing a little bit of work.、Um, when I was growing up, in return for working at my dad's office, he would give me a little bit of spending money、uh, every week. So that was kind of the deal or the bargain we had. So in return for the land. Each group paid the group above it, and Tom talked about how that group was built. Peasants being the lowest part of that system, and then the king was the highest.、Uh, each group would either pay taxes、um, for the privilege of、uh, living on the land, or they might be asked to fight in wars because there would be different countries fighting each other back then. Now. You could pay taxes in terms of money, but a lot of the peasants they really didn't have any cash or coins. They actually would do a lot of、um, bargaining, and a lot of them would pay their taxes、uh, in. In the form of food, or maybe livestock. Maybe they had were raising cattle, or had pigs or chickens, and they'd give some of that livestock、uh, back to their nobles or their. I guess it was the knights who were giving them the land, and then that would be passed along until eventually the king would have a lot of it. So again, we're talking about feudalism or the feudal system, and that's、mm -hmm. what they used in the Middle Ages. Now, another powerful institution at the time, the Christian、mm -hmm. Church, could be compared to royalty. So this was a powerful institution 
that was set up at the time. It's some system of organization. We've got、uh, you know politics. We've got the government with the king and stuff like that. That's one institution, royalty. And now we've got another institution, the church. More specifically, the Christian church. And I'm guessing probably the Roman Catholic Church、mm-hmm. was、uh, the most powerful at the time.、Uh, they could be compared to royalty. Okay, royalty, of course, is the royal family. And at the time, the Christian Church could also be considered royalty, I suppose, with a pope at the top, and then the bishops further down, and stuff like that. And so that's what royalty means here: the royal family, kings, queens, and stuff like that. And the church owned land and could influence kings and nobles to act in its interests. So the church had land as well as the king. I don't know if it said the church had all the land. I think they probably had some of it, but、uh, because they were so powerful and at least they had、uh, you know a significant amount of land, therefore they could influence those kings and nobles. Maybe they could blackmail them. I suppose. Who knows? Hey, if you don't do this, then we're going to do this, and you're going to be in big trouble. And so, I guess the kings and the nobles had to listen to the church. Yeah, if you act in someone's interest, it just means you do what they ask you to do. You do what's best for them instead of what's best for you.、Um, the church also played an important role in education because back then. Really, very few people could read. We didn't have a printing press, and so having a book was a big deal. It was expensive, so priests were some of the only people who even learned how to read and write. And in order to、uh, even have a Bible, which was kind of the most important book back then, some of these priests would spend. Years copying the words from one Bible and making another one. That was how they got another copy of a book. It was tough back then.、Mm. They also used this privilege to teach others about history, foreign languages, and more. So, can you imagine、uh, not having the ability to to even go to school or have a book? That was pretty、uh, impossible back then. So that's why we call it the Middle Ages. Things were very primitive back then. If you have a privilege, just means you have some sort of advantage, some sort of special right to something, and it was a privilege to、uh, be able to read and write. Obviously, they told us that back in school. Hey, driving is not a right; it's a privilege. You've got to earn it. It's not something that should be just given to you. So here, the priests had this privilege, this special right. Uh, to teach others about history, they could teach them foreign languages if、uh, they wanted to learn, say, French or Italian or German or Spanish or whatever. I'm not sure if those languages existed in that that time. Yes, they did. Or, or in their in their early forms, and they could also teach you more about science and whatever what little they knew. And moving on now to the final paragraph, it says the church was also the guardian and judge of morals in this era. So if you're the guardian of someone, you're kind of like the supervisor of someone. You're the protector. You're the keeper of someone.、Uh, you could be someone's legal guardian, for example, if、uh, you're a child and your parents. Have died. Well, then maybe your aunt or uncle becomes your legal guardian, the person who is legally responsible for your protection and raising you and stuff like that. In this particular case, the church was the guardian or the protector of society, and they're the ones who also told us what is right and what is wrong. That's what morals are all about. Yeah, it's not、uh, something that's legal or illegal. Instead, it's what's right and wrong morally. Like it's morally wrong to lie, but you might not get put into prison if you lie. But it's not、uh, something that's of good, upstanding moral value. So it was these morals that made knights more than just warriors. Yes, they did a lot of the fighting. That's what a warrior is. Someone who's an experienced soldier would be a warrior. It also made these knights.、Um, Really important in terms of the morals and the code that people live by. You know, you should do this if you're with this class of people. The code of chivalry set out how knights should behave and included such rules as never retreating in battle. You could never be a chicken. Chicken means you kind of、uh, give up and you run away if you're in a fight. No, you could never retreat. You fought until you died or you won the battle. That's what it means to retreat, to back away, to move. 
move away from something to retreat.、Uh, you had to protect the weak. So, if, of course, we would always protect the children and the women back then. That was part of the code, and you had to champion good over evil. If you champion something, and this is being used as a verb, it means you support or back that thing. So they were definitely、uh, men who were supposedly morally、uh, upstanding. They were good men, and they had to follow this code of conduct that was very important. And that code was called chivalry. That's right, and they couldn't get caught cheating on that code; otherwise, they would be in big trouble. So,、yeah. yes,、uh, you weren't just a bloodthirsty warrior if you were a knight. You had to kind of set an example for society、right. with that code of behavior. And again, you had to set a good example for everybody; otherwise, people would look down on you. And of course, in the end, good would always conquer evil. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation about medieval Europe. We're going to talk some. More about it next time, but before we say goodbye today, we'd like to hear once again from our Chinese teacher. 来到第二段的最后一句 In return for land, each group paid the group above it, either in taxes or by fighting for them in wars. 作为对土地的回报，每个群体都会对上一阶层缴付报酬，无论是以纳税的方式，或是在战争中为上一阶层而战。名词 return 有回报、归还、返回的意思。片语 in return for something 是指作为的回报。例如 ，John treated me to a hearty dinner in return for my help. 约翰请我吃一顿丰盛的晚餐来报答我的帮助。另外，本句使用了对等连接词 either A or B， 意思是不是 A 就是 B。在使用对等连接词时。要注意 A 或 B 是否为对等结构的字或词。例如，本课本句中的 A 或 B 都是介系词片语。我们再举一个例子 ：You can take this medicine either in liquid form or in capsules. 你可以用喝药水或吞胶囊的方式来服用此药。其他常见的对等连接词还有 neither A nor B， 不是 A 也不是 B。例如。Jeff is neither tall nor short. He is a man of average height. Jeff 不高也不矮，他是中等身材。另外也有 not only A but also B， 不但 A 而且 B。例如 ，Kevin is not only smart but also hardworking. 凯文不但聪明而且勤奋。文章的第三段提到，在当时的中古社会，教会是个很有权力的组织。我们看到第三段的第一句 ，Another powerful institution at the time, the Christian Church, could be compared to royalty. 在当时，另一个强大的机构，基督教教会，能够与皇室相提并论。动词 compare 有比较、比喻的意思。Compare A with 或 to B 就是指比较 A 和 B。After comparing the red dress with the blue one, Mary decided to buy the blue one. 在比较这件红色的洋装和蓝色的洋装后，玛丽决定买蓝色的那件。Compare A to B 是指将 A 比喻为 B 的意思。例如 ，Life is often compared to a journey. 人生常被比喻为一趟旅程。而最后一段的第一句 ，The church was also the guardian and judge of morals in this era. 在这个时代，教会也是道德规范的守护者和审判者。本句的 morals 为名词，固定用复数型表示，意思是道德规范。另外 ，moral 也可以做形容词用，意思是道德的。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢大家收听。That's all for today, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.